So okay, well, welcome to the jury roundtable, everybody. Um, so last season, we had someone from the season prior um, host the jury roundtable. So we had season one for season two. Um, the budget couldn't afford anyone from season two. So they said, uh, what's the best solution? Uh, have Jacob do it, because why the fuck not? Uh, this is the only time where <laughs> it's against protocol to wear the hat now. So I did my hair for y'all. This is the one time I'll do it. So, you know, all, many things to celebrate. Um, but before we get started, I just want to get just a couple of things out of the way. Um, we did not update you on who the part one or part two winners are. We only told you guys that part three is currently undergoing as we speak. Morgan won part one of the competition in a game of um, Cups on a Wall, um, where both Morgan... It, well, yeah, you saw the YouTube. Yeah, you the saw YouTube that Morgan video. won. <laughs> ruining the moment, Chris. Um, but yeah, so he they won part one. Said. And Benji won part two. So Benji and Morgan are now competing in part three. Oh. Alex is currently hosting them as we speak, wow. and Alex will be joining us um, once they're done over there. They're currently doing before... No, we're doing quotes. We've gathered a bunch of quotes throughout the season, and we have... We're asking them who said these quotes. This could be on any of the Zoom recordings. This could be in the house <laughs> chat. We're taking any public media to which they could have received these quotes. Whatever. Well, I don't even know why I explained it. Only to jurors oh. or everyone in the cast? Everyone. But everyone. So including Harley, who's there with them, but not competing in part three. Not for that long. That being said, just... Uh, who's where's Adrian? How do you get Adrian quote? Like, Adrian got I... a quote. Adrian got a quote. Adrian did get a quote. We would talk all your shit he about spoke? He spoke? Anyways, would you use this orbo drop and screenshot that I supplied? The jury round table before this already spirals out of control. Just a couple of things we're going to get out the way. Um, I understand that this is a game, but I understand it's not just a game. There are genuine relationships and emotions that are drawn out through this experience. A lot of you guys have voiced your own opinions on one another and towards each other or in your host chats. So definitely there were a lot of high stakes. And a couple of you have only joined the jury recently. So it could still be raw for you just having just exited out of the game and now having to reacclimate yourself as a juror. So I understand that emotions are high, but I hope that we can have a civil uh, professional conversation about the final three, about the merits of their game, their pros and cons, what they can do to get your vote, what they can do to lose your vote, what needs to be explained, what needs to be elaborated, what needs to be confirmed. We're going to talk about each of the final three, Benji, Harley, Morgan, two of them will be scheduling in the coming week we are anticipating what like friday saturday for the game to be over and that's when the power will shift to you guys and you will vote for who you think will best represent hypnotic big brother season three game wars um so we're gonna start off with just this random question just raise your hand going into the jury phase did you think any of this final three would have made it to this point Raise your hand. Okay, well, um, let's let's talk about that. Like, who did you expect to see make the end game? Who are you surprised to see her at this point? Just go off. Well, Morgan, Morgan was definitely like hit or miss. Like, I think he could have made they could they could have made it far. And Harley was definitely someone that everyone was wanting to take to the end, so it's not a huge surprise. Uh, I thought I definitely did think Benji would have been cut before this point. Oh, Benji was... You can go join. Okay. I, like... I just didn't want this to be chaos, so I was like, let me just... I appreciate the politeness. <laughs> um, so, I think at this point, like, yes, but not until pretty, pretty later on in the game. Like, because from the beginning, like, it seemed like everyone was targeting Benji and Morgan, so thinking of... Hi! The... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so thinking of it from like POV <laughs> the first few weeks, I think it is surprising to see them still there. But kind of in retrospect, like looking back from now, I think it makes a lot of sense. But I didn't expect that from the beginning because everyone was targeting them, it seemed. So that's impressive. Yeah, I kind of forgot about like ironically my boot where with the flip really happened. I hate to make myself feel important, but it kind of was. That's what I was going to say is I think right as jury started, I would have said that Morgan and Benji were like probably some of the more likely people to get out. But then right after Wesley left, um, pretty much the entire game swung in their favor because they got all of us to target ourselves instead. But Harley, yeah, being at the end, I'm not 
fully surprised by either. Same way with Wesley of like I imagined Harley was gonna go deep. I I knew from like day three Morgan was gonna be at the end because I try to tell everybody about Morgan because everyone was targeting Benji instead. But I'm like, everyone needs to look at Morgan. Morgan's doing this, Morgan's doing that. So I, I had a feeling Morgan was gonna be at the end. Um Benji, it was a hit or miss for Benji because again, everyone was targeting Benji instead of Morgan. So I didn't know how that was gonna play out. But I knew if like both of them made it past a certain point, both of them were gonna be at the end. Um and here we are. And Harley, um, I felt like Harley was gonna be at the end because I don't think anyone saw Harley as a threat to take out. So all right then. So let's um let's go over each of the individuals of the final three. We'll talk about their social game, their strategic game, and their physical game. All the merits to the game. Obviously, everyone has their own different philosophy, their different game styles, um, what they most respect in a finalist or who they would like to award for as the winner. But we're just going to talk about just each of them one at a time. I usually would do like social game, then the strategic game, then the physical game. But I'd much rather talk about just each of the final three themselves. So this is the first time I believe I've had the opportunity to host a jury roundtable with a final three instead of it being the final two. So I think there's, there's a nice opportunity to compare and contrast each of their games. So let's go in alphabetical order. Let's talk about Benji first. Um, what are people's thoughts on Benji? What were their relationships with Benji like when they were in the game? And what does Benji need to do in order to get their votes at the end? And then we we'll can start. Morgan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, I had a pretty good relationship with Benji in the game. Um, probably my closest ally in the game. And I would say that, you know, for me personally, for Benji to really get my vote would be to capitalize on, like, what he did better than Morgan and what he did better than Harley. Um, personally, I feel like, like, I had a much stronger social relationship with Benji where, like, if I were on the block and Benji had won a veto, like, I would expect Benji to use the veto on me, whereas Morgan, I expect Morgan probably has some other plans and, and things like that, even though I was working with Morgan, so... Now I need to hear from Morgan's side. If it was on, oh wait, we're doing Benji. Oops, we're just doing Benji. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, we're good. That's pretty much all I want to say. Um, yeah. I didn't realize you and Benji were working that closely, like from my perspective, because I was working closely with Benji and Morgan and Juan, and then me and you, Eric, started developing a relationship, uh, kind of shortly before you left. So I'm surprised to hear that. I didn't really realize that. So that's I, on Benji, I guess. <laughs> early on, like I, I feel like Benji in general is someone who just invested a lot of social capital into very select people and then pretty much didn't invest much into almost anybody else. I think he invested a lot in Eric. Um, Eric, you can tell me if I'm wrong on this. I got the impression he invested a lot in Logan early on and he definitely invested a lot in Morgan. And... I feel like in any, like a lot of other players, like I've spoken with Joanne, you mentioned that briefly in the jury chat. I know um, me, Liz and Cody talked about it a lot. Benji really never came to some of us unless we were HOH or had a power or had something of value for him. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Um, but like, that's, that's kind of like the issue I'm having with it is that it's like, whenever there was a strategic decision that was like forwarding both Morgan and Benji as a duo, it's hard for me to really be able to know what Benji directly contributed that isn't a competition because he didn't really articulate to any other, to some of us, what kind of headspace he was at or who he was actually intending on taking with him. Um, yeah, we started off solid in the beginning but then as the game went on and I got roped into my side of like my alliances and stuff, it was the opposite. I felt it was the opposite side of Benji and our game, our relationship kind of just drifted until more towards the end. And it was obviously just so Morgan and Benji would be on good terms with everybody. I don't um, want to talk about Morgan, but like I feel like that's the only conversation I really had with Benji was whenever I was in power. But I have no room to speak on that because I didn't have conversations with anybody. <laughs> I mean, I I'm feel kidding. like I, I'm not a social superstar ever, but like I try to reach out to people generally. And Benji did not try with me uh, until, except for the one time 
where I was HOH and he was and, and like I had very limited options and he was like, hey, was and he realized he was basically 50 50 shot of going up and then he was like, let's have a call and like form the secret transparently false secret alliance because I really think people wouldn't expect it. Like this might be remotely believable if you said this any point before I was HOH and you were very obviously a target for my nominees. I know from my perspective, um, me and Benji were really close. We talked a lot of games, surprisingly, more than like um, Morgan. And I even told Benji, I was like, Benji, I want to work with you, but I can't with Morgan here. Like, I straight up told Benji that. <laughs> and Benji was like, I know, I understand. Um, but back to what Chris said about how Benji only put social capital into certain people, it worked for Benji. Even when people were coming after Benji instead of Morgan, like, me and Harley and even Joanne stuck our necks out for Benji because I feel like I know we're only talking about Benji, but we wanted Benji here more than Morgan because we knew that um, Benji would kind of be easier to beat, if that makes sense, like in a social world, because we knew that Benji only really talked to us because all those pre-jury votes, Benji wasn't pushing anything. It was literally just Morgan. For the most, for from my perspective, like Benji seemed like, oh, I'm just going to let Morgan do all this and take but the here's heat. Here's my problem with that: if people are keeping you because they think you can, they can beat you. Unless you go to end with like a super goat, which is very possible here. Why should I respect you over the person who also went to the end, but was actually more of an active, was actually more of an active player in the game? I think it depends if. Benji investing ca like that social capital in a few only if select people was his strategy or if that was just like kind of out of quote unquote laziness because I think like Juan said it is a a pretty good strategy because if you have like a few people who are willing to rally for you that's kind of all it takes whereas like you don't need the whole house to like love you and be obsessed with you and like he, he had a few people and it worked for him and let's not forget benji won the comps that benji needed to win mm -hmm. benji, benji was going to like i was gonna bring benji, that up too yeah my benji ass, won the man. vetoes that benji needed to win yeah, yeah especially towards these last few rounds like he really has been winning a lot i do want to speak on um like obviously i can't speak for benji but like we did talk a lot early game and about like you know you know wesley saying you know you're Social relationship wasn't that great with him. And then, like, you know, Chris saying, like, you know, nearing a certain point, it was just, like, we almost didn't talk. Um, I think it was due to mostly just uh, how the dynamics of the house were kind of, like, going at the time. Like, the people who were doing a lot of the pushing or really trying to, like, work with the other side and not doing it subtly. Like, the players doing it subtly are, like, you know, Liz and Joanne and Juan and Morgan. Like, those players are doing it really subtly where Benji took a different stance on it, it seems, and almost was, like, let me wait until the point gets to where we have a fresh relationship, pretty much. Like, we don't have any past history where me and you dislike each other and we have a new grounds to work on. Like, I think that's where he was waiting for those times to build those relationships and say, hey, let's build this trust now. And a lot of times, you know, you did it for his own favor and it worked. Like, you know, so that's certain things that you got to, like, look at there. And so I think one of the main things with you, Wesley, why you didn't really get a message for quite a bit was because, like, people kind of caught on that you would message at the same time every day on eviction days and kind of ask people like, what's up with the vote? And so that kind of got around so people really didn't know where you were at strategically until it was getting to that point, like kind of like where I went and then you went. And I think people were trying to either get you on their side or just letting you go because people didn't know where you were. Honestly, Honestly like, like, oh, sorry. sorry. Um, I was just going to say, you go first. You talk, talk sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I was just going to say, like, briefly, uh, you know, to kind of, like, counter what Eric said and in Wesley's defense, um, I feel like Wesley, at least messaging on the day of evictions was at least something I could count on. Benji literally talked to me maybe three times. Once when we started the game, once when I got my first HOH, and then once when I got my second HOH. Um, and it was just... I'm sorry, that does not look like strong social game to me. It doesn't look like strategy to me. It looks like someone who is just lacking. Um, but and you still didn't put Benji up too. So that, I, which I don't, I don't know how, like how Benji was able to do that. Like it, it, 
It's just, Honestly, because I mean, at the timeline, you were the bigger threat in the house to me because I had no idea where you were leaning. That's the only reason why Benji slid under. And to me, that looks a lot more like dumb luck than good planning. I feel like that's another element to it is that because he wasn't talking game with a lot of people, he was more so a wild card. And as the game was getting on, I think this was becoming a season of everyone, like a lot of people having very clear targets in mind. And when people were winning HOHs like Joanne, you knew you had to come after me and Cody. Liz knew she had to come after Juan and you. Everyone kind of knew they had to go after Mike. So I I don't know. Like, that. I, like it did work out for him because everybody else had clear targets versus, okay, he's a wild card. He might not be coming after me versus the devil I absolutely know is coming after me. But the thing is, is that I need Benji to actually acknowledge that that was a stra- strategic goal in mind and not just <laughs> a coincidence that came out of it because... I'll speak on Cody on behalf of this. There was multiple times he was talking to uh, Morgan and Morgan was like trying to vouch for Benji being like, Hey, you got to talk like Cody, you got to talk to Benji more. And like, almost like pushing Benji's social game out there because he, she could tell, or they could tell that um, Benji wasn't doing enough to connect with some other people on the outside. So I think like if it was a strategic thing, it's not very obvious from the outset. And I think he needs to either realize that or correct which way that's going. And well, then also... The uh, other viable option here of Morgan. Uh, basically, <laughs> Morgan had a thing of, I think they were out front strategically, which did work for them, but I do think there were a few times, like, even early on, where I felt Morgan was being messy, literally the first HOH, I, as a co-HOH, did not know who they were nominating to the nomination ceremony. I mean, that's the first week, right? Uh, yeah, I know. I was just pointing out that he, they were kind of like, and they kind of defined the messiness of the whole season. That that's oh, okay. the whole season into the two factions. So, also mm-hmm. correct me if someone else has the map here, right? Uh, Benji, out of the three, definitely has the most competition wins. But how many is it exactly? It's three vetoes and one HOH. Is that right? Or no? no Second, no, I have no. notes. I don't feel like HOH is in three vetoes. Two HOH is three vetoes. Harley has nothing, and I believe Morgan <laughs> has one HOH and one HOH, one veto. One veto. So yes. I do also think that's another element to think here of. I think I think a lot of us in general are viewing Morgan and Benji as a duo. If we're looking at who was probably more integral for both of them getting far, I do think Benji's competition wins do need to be considered here. Because there were yeah, multiple because... scenarios where they were getting put on the block next to each other, and Benji pulling it out made a big difference. Right, for sure, for sure. How many times was it though that where Benji was in a position to use the veto to like save Morgan or and vice put... versa? Or yeah, or in the sense of also like how many vetoes were they used like or HOHs were used when they probably didn't need them too? Like you know. Like, were they using the vetoes always to save themselves? And were they crucial every time? Because I'm honestly not sure. I took a little bit of a break in, <laughs> in the jury house, logged out for a little bit. Um, I would say so by was... end game, every HOH mattered because there was a very two, there was a very clear faction warfare going on. I'd say from before the Logan eviction, there was a very clear faction warfare going on the entire time. So I, I do want to interrupt for a second because. Uh, we actually yes. have the results now of the part three of the final HOH. So with the quotes competition, Benji won the final HOH and has chosen to take Morgan to the final two. Congratulations, Morgan. Therefore, I'm shocked. Wow. Harley Can I not is vote? the last Can I have member stayed? of the jury. I believe Harley will not be here tonight because Carly said she was sleepy. So uh, I do not think she will be making it here. However, just wanted to let that be known, especially because I know you guys were still talking about Benji. So if you want any input from that, uh, that just happened. Well, I'm I, not surprised. That Jack Bowie Jane, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> it's expected. What are you Sorry, gonna say I mean that I mean honestly that makes me lean towards Morgan because like I know it's your closest ally, but but Holly's a free win. But let me say like this. Speaking of Benji, when Benji won the veto when Final Eleven. 
or I think no, when I, when I was on a blog, or it was some veto Benji one, and I was like Benji. No, it was down to Benji saving me when I was on the blog before I left. I told Benji, I was like Benji, if you sit next to Morgan, you're losing. Like I straight out told Benji that, and Benji was like, um, I don't know. I'm like, no, you're losing to Morgan, <laughs> and I was like, you have to do something. Like if you want to win this game, like. You have to like keep me around. I'll take out Morgan for you, so you don't have to. Obviously, that didn't happen, you know. Um, so that's crazy. I did not. I don't know why Benji took Morgan to the end. Um, but you know, I think it makes sense Loyalty. for me. Honestly, it yeah. not, doesn't make sense in the sense of like you know what's the easiest way to win, but it makes sense with the, the theme of what Benji's game has been. Like Benji has been loyal to the people he's been loyal to. Like and he's playing the game he's been playing. Like. If he switches up now, it's like it just shows that, like, okay, he's doing anything he can to win. And, like, all those ungenuine conversations you guys feel like you've had seem even more ungenuine now. You know what I mean? But, like, maybe there was some genuineness to the very little you had because he was trying to go ahead and, you know, play the game with the people he was playing with. So, if you were to take out Morgan, I'd be, like, scratching my head. Like, do I even want to vote Benji at that point? Like, I'd scream. I'd be like, yes! But no, back to Joanne saying if Benji saved Morgan. Yeah, the time I was HOH and put up Morgan and Cody, Benji won HOH and took Morgan off. You mean Vito? Yeah. Um, so I just, when I was HOH, Final Five, Morgan won Vito and took Benji off, and that's kind of especially in hindsight, probably the biggest mistake. Which, this, this applies to multiple people here. It is astounding that nobody put Morgan and Benji up against each other on the block at any point. Because at least watching from the jury house, there were times here where I was like, I don't <laughs> understand why only Morgan is going like If only anybody up, but only them Benji won the veto at Final Five, Morgan was going up. I was going to take that shot. I was just scared because I didn't want to burn my personal individual bridge with Morgan. I was too scared. And I shouldn't have been. Yeah, I think Morgan had problems with everybody and had no qualms about burning them, I'm just saying. So if we're talking about ingenuine when doing game tops, both of them are, like, bottom of my list. Benji only talked to me when I had power. Morgan only talked to me when she could manipulate me. And I really don't appreciate that from either of them in this. So I really wish I could abstain from my vote. I will say Morgan, like, half tried with me sometimes. So that's where I'm kind of on a tier of. Um, but to counter If Liz abstain doesn't show up to voting, I am not voting either. In solidarity. <laughs> um, so, Eric, you were saying something about, like, Benji's loyalty. Um, oh, shit, I lost my train of thought because we talked about other stuff. Oops. <laughs> It'll come back. Uh, yeah, I'll forget it for now, I guess. But... but I think out of Benji and Morgan, I think Benji had the most, like, consistent path, if that makes sense. Like, Morgan was always scrambling and, like, using information against everybody. Benji never had to do that shit. Benji, because... Hey, Benji wanted to call when Benji needed Harley that. had a very consistent pass to the end. Did that mean her game was good? We'll get to we'll get to Harley. We'll get to She's Harley. She's gone already, so we can't really get to her. Uh, okay, true. Um, <laughs> My point is, reliability what does was not... There to reliability to to I love Harley to death, the best but like, what was there to do? Of, like, what was there? Get, getting the jury's respect. Okay, Sorry, for your actual for example... Troy Zan had a very reliable like... strategy to reach end games. Wait, what? I mean, Which... of course, it was his island. Uh, game changers. Huh? You know why Troy Zan? You know why Troy Zan made the final three? Because why they all had a dinner. They all had a dinner six months before the game even started. Because they all pre-game the game. So let's not even talk about Survivor season. Let's talk about this season. No, uh, um, it, was, it was well, it was more because he didn't. Do it Wesley tangent. With a free, t and he realized he just took a free end game ticket. Yeah, Are we talking about did. Morgan now? Did anyone have any? Perfect I, guess should. <laughs> I was about to say, speaking of gaming, let's talk about Morgan. Let's. I, I know that we oh, were actually going to go from Benji to Harley, but considering Morgan had come up quite frequently during the Benji section, let's talk about Morgan. I'll go first. Um, like I said earlier, I knew from like day three, Morgan was up to some shit. Like, I told Joanne, I told Chris, I told Cody, I told, like, I was literally like, Morgan is doing some shit. I don't trust it. We have to do something about it. Um, and I don't know if I would say Morgan's social game was the best, but Morgan knew when to take information that 
mm-hmm. she knew and use that and put herself in a great position every round. Yeah. So I, I want to just throw in a little story here because I think this is honestly very critical for like, at least from my perspective of like what Morgan's game was. And it was that like early on, they kind of felt like a wild card. Like there were multiple times where like some of us were talking to Morgan and it didn't really seem clear if they were on one side of the vote or if they were trying to shake things up for whatever reason. Um, but I felt like uh, even around final 11 that I knew that Morgan and Benji were really close and possibly a final two. Um, and I just want to bring up this story because I think it, it it's critical for how the entire house basically split on that divide during live night. And it was I that say Morgan felt like when it was very clear two factions when I was in that Morgan felt like the person on the other faction we could deal with the most. So, so, so I want to give this this story here. Wesley, please, please. I just want to give this because I think it's helpful. When it was Eric and Benji on the block and Morgan, I believe, was playing in the veto, Cody, myself, and Morgan were like, okay, we might actually have, or we we might actually have a chance to like pull Morgan away from Benji and Eric and maybe finally like bring them in as like a useful number around final nine. So the three of us came up with a plan to try to uh, strategize Stayfold to make sure that neither Benji or Eric won the competition with the order being we would all fold until Cody left and then we would all fold until Morgan left and then we all folded until I left. Morgan followed that to a T. And because of that, Cody, my, Cody, myself, and Liz all believed that uh, Morgan wasn't as close to Benji as they were, which is how the disconnected controller piece got out, which I think was very critical in how the entire thing came down. And we were very careful to not share too much information with Morgan but after stay and fold, they played that so perfectly that it was like there's no way they're faking it. They have to be realizing that they have to ditch they have to ditch Benji, and then gave them the disconnected controller, and then history played out from there. Speaking of history, um, we have another guest here, um, the third placer. Um, I don't know how long that she will be in attendance, but uh, Harley is currently joining us. I just admitted her right now, and she's loading up on the screen. Um, back to what Chris was saying, I knew Morgan and Benji were a final two from like day one or two because both of them came to me and was like, Oh, let's make a trio with me, you, and then both of them were like, Let's bring in Joanne, and then like they it was them making stuff with me, and that's like red flag number one why I didn't feel comfortable with Morgan because Morgan was always leading that, and that's why I came to you, Chris, and saying all this stuff, but bringing up Morgan's name instead of Benji because I was like. I don't I don't want Morgan in here like Morgan has to go. So I think Morgan Morgan knew what they were doing this whole time. Morgan played although not the cleanest game. Morgan was very messy, but it worked to Morgan's benefit every round. I I just want to ask a legitimate question here like Joanne, if do you still turn on Wesley myself and Cody and Liz mm. at at around that time? Uh, during live night if disconnected controller doesn't get back to you does it happen that round still or is it get postponed a little bit to still kind of get the outsiders like benji and morgan out that's what i'm curious about because i just don't have a good idea of what other people were already thinking at that time um that's a good question i think i was already thinking of it and that was kind of like the last motivation that i felt like i needed okay Especially yeah. because, oh, like, Morgan and Benji approached me and Juan about Superfruit, our alliance, like, super early. Pretty much the same time you and Liz approached, or you like, approached me and Liz and Juan about Band Geeks. It was, like, the same time. So okay. the whole time, for the first half of the game, me and Juan are, like, because Juan was my ride or die, like, if no one knows by now, like, um... And we were like, I was starting to get worried. I was like, okay, we're like kind of playing. That's, that's, that, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's funny. Continue. <laughs> At least that's what I thought. Um, but so Juan can uh, confirm or deny if that was the case for him. But uh, I was getting worried. I was like, we're going to have to like choose at some point, like who we're committing to because we can't like play both sides of the house forever. And I just felt like in my conversations with like, especially Morgan, I just like vibed with Morgan a lot. Like we would talk about other things outside of the game. Like they really made me feel like I was their best friend. And like, 
um we vibed a lot I like really didn't talk to Benji the same way Benji was kind of just like because we were in superfruit whereas me and Morgan specifically did have an individual one-on-one -on -one relationship so I just felt like I was vibing with them more and then like our conversation so that's kind of what made me start to like be drawn more to them um and then when I heard about that I was like surprised because from my perspective I thought you and Liz were like all in on Bang Geeks so I was like oh my god like I'm gonna let them down but like I didn't realize you guys had other <laughs> things going on so yeah there was so much other shit that we were not right. in <laughs> yeah I was very uh naive about that so um so then when I heard about disconnected controller or like all that stuff I was like oh whatever like um that was yeah it was like kind of the last and draw it wasn't the only thing um but I think with me winning the next HOH like mm -hmm. it just yeah and I think that's kind of where the riff started with like me and Joanne like me and Joanne's game kind of went down because like Joanne knew the whole time I was like done with Morgan but Morgan just had that hold on Joanne and I couldn't break it and I was trying to so hard and Joanne was like I don't know I kind of like Morgan I'm just like no yeah. no get away from it but yeah, I think Morgan. that's the remarkable thing is that like all the physical evidence yeah. and like shown evidence should have been telling us don't trust Morgan. They're one hundred percent with Benji, and yet would constantly be throwing out to know exactly what to say to start making us at least consider. Oh, maybe Morgan is like realizing Benji is detrimental to their game and actually wants to jump ship. Like we thought that for like three rounds in a row leading up to oh, yeah. live night that they were completely <laughs> willing to sure. and Benji. adding to that i literally i kept going to chris and cody like oh i think morgan's okay they keep saying you know they're alone i don't want to leave them like stranded in the game i think that they're you know helpful like literally they played me like a fiddle i joanne i feel for you so much because they really had me in their pocket so i think i'm my heart goes to you also didn't say it in the jury chat yet super respect to you in your game um sorry i like totally zoned out for like two days and forgot to greet you and mike <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, Liz, we needed to like really sit down and talk about your noms. I I made the mistake of getting in my head because I was the following HOH. Yes, you did. And I told I your ass to, I told your ass to put them the fuck. No, I don't want to put Morgan up because no. I didn't want to put Morgan up because I want to get in my head too much. To I, th I thought they were oh. locked in as a three. No, like, I and ah. I try to, I try to like give you subtle nudge hints. Like, no, they're really not. You have a two. You let the two. They're gonna choose each other. You let the two. They're gonna choose each other. I'm gonna be quiet now because I'm trying to woo side. Not gonna lie, Mike. Everybody here when that happened, we were like Mike is so fucking dumb. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can't confirm. I was like, I should said, put I up said, more. Bro, you just let, they won. They won. I said they won. They they won. They, How was I they, supposed to anticipate that? I told you. I already Bro, told if you. you They've been talking since the beginning. He I didn't want any. I didn't veto. want my nominations influence. I was like so headstrong of like. There are That's why I was so pissed. This no, I no. because no. I was like, I was what I, I was trying to say to you, Mike, and why I was so mad I didn't get a chance to talk to you is I was literally gonna say this like. Morgan and Benji are like the strongest like done deal duo in this house there's they cannot they need to be broken up right now like getting me out would be useless um and like worse for your game uh so I was just I, so upset I didn't get a chance I'm to, like, so I'm so I wish I have so many regrets but, there's um, a lot of times Mike where people want to head. talk to you yes Sorry, Joanne. I'm sorry, Joanne. Oh, no. There was something else I wanted to comment on that you were saying about... Oh, we were talking about Morgan and um, a big topic that uh, me and Juan kept discussing was because we were talking about, you know, Morgan being in everyone's pocket. Something that me and Juan always talked about was Cody and Morgan's relationship because we could never figure that out. And, like, again, like, Juan was convinced, like, Cody and Morgan are working together and then Morgan like I would try to like confront Morgan about it because, because I felt like we were closer and Morgan like always reassured me like no like Cody believes we're like we're working together but we're not and like whatever and Morgan was like I'm loyal to you and Benji like especially after he after Juan put Morgan up like Morgan literally told me like I'm loyal to you and Benji and then 
so yeah i yeah i can try to speak on what i think cody was doing with morgan because at least from sinnoh starter's perspective it was always a situation of like cody knew that he could get useful information out of morgan and that like especially with that with what happened at uh final 11 leading into the disconnected controller debacle was that well, Morgan was not going to be a number that was necessarily coming after us. And I think that that was an important reason why Morgan didn't touch the block during live night, because I think initially we were cons the, the, the main three names that we were considering were Benji, Morgan, and you, Joanne. Um, and then Cody, I don't know, got cold feet, wanted to go after you more because of the disconnected controller stuff. I don't know. But I think that morgan was in the in the talks but that there was always someone who was like always a more immediate threat like similar to how i the entire game was like i think benji's coming after me and he's always a threat to me but there's always a bigger fish to fry other than him i think it was a similar situation for cody and morgan yeah that and should set me off and we're always afraid of what we don't know right so if like oh, I talk to Morgan more than I talk to this person. So, like, I at least have some sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. with them. Like, I should go after this person who, like, I don't talk to and, like, they might come after me. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, if we're all having this, like, one-on-one -on -one connection with Morgan, we're not going to think, like, they're an immediate threat, like you're saying. And it's funny that you say that about Cody and Morgan because, like, Morgan was telling us, like, when I was talking about putting up Cody or putting up you, like, Morgan was like, oh my god, finally, like, please, like, you know, like, really pushing to get you guys out, so. Morgan, Morgan doubled you a lot. Um, yeah. Just to circle around, since we, we also talked about it with Benji, about uh, physical comp game for Morgan as well. Because, at least from my perspective, and what I remember hearing from several, like, secondary sources here, was that Morgan was throwing a lot of comps until late game. There is no way Morgan did not throw that Statue of Liberty comp. No way. I will take that to my grave. Because Morgan was just like, oh, my arm hurts. I'm done. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was literally my face when I rewatched that video. I'm like, wait, rewind. Because I was trying to get the time of that comp. And that happened. I was like, what the fuck? Like, Morgan was solid. And he just dropped it. That, that's why, like, I want I want to confirm what competitions Morgan was actively actually throwing, because if it was strategic throwing, I do think it contributed to Morgan not being considered a big threat. Like, it's similar to how Benji was not being considered, like, an immediate threat because nobody really... No, there were so many more immediate dangers ahead of them, ahead of him. I feel like it's a similar thing for Morgan, where it was like, oh, Morgan isn't doing absolutely great on competitions and because was socially positioned in such a good place that winning competitions was going to put them in a bad spot so and i i just need i just need to acknowledge if like what competitions were actively being thrown versus like you know final five veto where it was like do or die and on my hoh when the stab the stab or whatever hoh morgan mm -hmm. literally told me i literally gave that to you and not benji because i i felt like you weren't going to put me up and i'm like no so, like, Morgan literally told me that she wanted me against her because I don't, I don't know why. she Because I was really thinking that it was going to be me against uh, whoever that last person was and leave Morgan and Benji in that final two for that HOH. But another reason that it made it look like Morgan and Benji weren't close because Morgan basically mm -hmm. cut Benji right there. So, I don't I, I, I feel I do feel like Morgan is the more critical element to separate like having the two of them seem separated because once again morgan was the one that was talking to more people outside immediate alliance circles that i kind of felt that when morgan was saying oh i'm not getting i'm not i don't really care about what benji or is like was saying things that made it seem like they were going a different direction than benji i was more likely to believe it because i didn't really get a conversation from benji too i just had to keep assuming benji was going in one direction i think yeah. morgan weaponized that element of him and also another thing even if Mor Morgan was on the block as a final norm against anybody, Morgan was staying. If Morgan was against Joanne, Joanne was going home. Morgan against me. I was going home. Morgan against Benji. Benji was probably going home. Like, it, it's, in my opinion, like, my from my perspective, I just think no matter who Morgan was on the block with during, like, even the first half and, like, the first part of the jury, Morgan was staying. 
just because of that reason you said, Cody and you thought y'all could get information from Morgan and they, and she was separated from Benji. And just the position that Morgan was in with Benji winning the comps and Morgan not winning. So I don't know. Morgan did what they had to do. And I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I know both Liz and touch base on hand. something. Um, speaking of Morgan being a final nominee, tonight was the first time they were a final nominee. I have like I have my little stats, I have my little notes. And Morgan was only nominated one other time. They were taken off the block. Yeah. And that she also, also she also doesn't have a single vote to evict to her name either. Which is why my by, by proxy. Which is why that veto you won, Mike, when I was on the block, I was like, take me down. Cause as soon as Liz told me, like, oh, if someone comes down, Benji's going up. I'm like, okay, I will get Benji out. Like, I don't care no more. I want to split them up. Mike, take me down. And you're like, I'm gonna keep the arms the same. I'm like, I, I, I think that's something I, I think that's something we have to so attribute to Bulk though, is that yeah. like they were, at least from my perspective, a lot of the pre-jury was like a very specific outsider group. That was like kind of conglomerating together and just kind of just kept getting trying to make too many big moves too early and just getting sweeped under the rug. And in, from my perspective, it was the two of them were kind of backed into a corner and they kind of both. This just speaks to both of their games in general. That I think is impressive that it, it like from that perspective, they were able to weaponize kind of the paranoia between everybody else and immediate danger levels that despite all the, actively our best interests, all of us kept going after each other, even when. I think everybody knew Morgan and Benji were big threats, even though nobody seemed to be uh, like no no one had Morgan or Benji as a number one ally at any point because they were just they they basically found that perfect they were basically waiting on this perfect opportunity and then once the house was set in the middle they just kind of sat back and watched the fireworks happen and by the time anybody I think in the game still realized what was going on it was already too late so I think that's something that both of them should be commended for. Honestly, Morgan telling me about Liz and you like talking about the disconnected controller was probably one of the best moves of Morgan's game because when I came after you, that's like when shit went down and like me and then Juan kind of became bigger targets. And I feel like if that didn't happen, there's a better chance Morgan and Benji could have stayed. We would have at least kind of stayed similar threat levels. Um, and also like, during and Morgan were playing Sorry. very similar games at that time. Like me and Morgan were talking to you and Liz and like also like with each other. So I feel like we were all kind of doing the same thing. And then when I made that move, it kind of made them fade to the background a little bit. Um, and then they and got my loyalty as well. So it's like. And it also kind of crystallized where the divide was like it made. Uh, Mike have to lock in with me and Co me Cody and Liz. It kind of made Juan and Harley. It, it made it clear to us that Juan and Harley were now solidifying with you, rather than just kind of this nebulous void where I think everyone knew there was a house divide, but no one was really sure exactly where it actually lied. It just solidified it, and at that point, once again, they could just float in the middle while all of us were like, "Okay, we need to go after Juan and Joanne because they explicitly threw our name out," or we have to go after Mike and Liz because they ex explicitly threw our name out. But it's funny because Morgan and Benji were like in the original, I feel like, other side of the house big targets, like from the very beginning of the game. So the fact that they were able to like get that target off of them and like make it all the way to final two is insane. I tried. <laughs> Every week I, I was like, Morgan's got to go. <laughs> I know. Every day, I was like, Morgan has to go. I know. <laughs> I do want to hear a little bit from uh, Harley, since Harley spent, you know, the entire game with the two players. I want to want to hear your perspective here. Hi, Hi. guys. I'm back. I had to take a phone call. Um, I'm calm. Um, I just want to say hi to all of my friends that I've missed so much that I haven't seen in what it feels like forever, especially you, Eric. I haven't seen you in what it feels like months, but it's actually only been a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's been a um, long time. I know. Um, I just, and I love you too, Chris. I just want to say that um, 
I thought me and Juan had a final two. That was all I was gonna say. Because we did have we 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 had we solidified a final two. But uh we 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 gonna we we gonna go in that for reunion. We're gonna save that for the reunion. Um I'm gonna be honest with you. Um I think I was the only one who didn't have an alliance with Morgan or Benji. I had one alliance. Go ahead. Oh, and Eric. I'm so sorry. And Eric. I had one alliance. And that was the core four. That was the only alliance that I was a part of. So after finding out about all these other alliances, I'm like, oh, okay. People have been very busy with their bodies. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, they played a well enough game to get them to the final two as many times as they should have been split up and could have been split up. They ended up winning an HOH, winning a veto. They they basically ended up winning when they needed to win. And once Mike was eliminated and didn't put, because I told Mike, I said, listen, I said, put them both up. Because only one of if one of them wins the veto, I know only one could be taken off. Not the other that, person could uh, take the other person off. So I do want when, to say I think that's a detriment to to uh, Morgan's game because what I was concerned about was burning a bridge that I thought was there with Morgan and, and no. it was not. She, 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 yeah. she believe it or not, no, she would have understood that I, because it's a game. No, because no, wait, wait, because it's a game, and at the end of the day, we're still playing a game. So she played you to get her so further to play the game. That's basically what happened. Because I I didn't want to be like, listen, they're a fine, they have a final two. I, I didn't I didn't know. I didn't ask. I assumed because of how they played the game and how they played with each other. And after him using the Vigo veto on her, I'm like, yeah, of course they're together. They we, we've been know they're together. So that was why I tried to like push the narrative, but I also didn't want to make you feel like I was trying to like stuff it down your throat, if that makes sense. You should have. That that should have been stuff further down my throat. Because like I, mean, I did consider that, it. That's don't what get she me said. wrong. But that's I what also she, that's what she said. But because she likes stuff stuff down her throat. But that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. That's but, for after uh, hours. This is on that's recording. For after <laughs> hours, yes. Big brother af big brother after dark. Um oh and I just want to say, Jacob, you're looking so handsome right now. Look at you. I don't ever pay you no compliments and you it's look because at you. There's no Yankees hat. That's that's exact. Thank you, Mike. You already know. Yes. Period. Um, but what Harley said about Morgan playing. Morgan played everybody. Everybody on she this did. right now. Yeah, one hundred percent. Either if it was in a good way or a bad way, Morgan. Right. Morgan did it, and I think even me from like day three when I saw Morgan had that like hold over people. I, Morgan, I still knew that I personally couldn't go after Morgan because I wanted to work with Benji and that would have cut Benji off from me. Liz, Liz said me too. Dead in the water. She said me too. She's raising her hand. She said me too. <laughs> I think I read, I read like a separate language. conversation. It's like, I'm going to be honest. I was not paying attention at all. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm talk I was talking. I'm not paying attention. Here, that's to all that matters. Talking. Oh, also, she's here. Harley. That's all that matters. I missed her. Yeah, she's here. That's like, all that matters. We have we have Liz's presence here. So respectfully, who's the real winner? I think it's us. Us, a hundred percent, one thousand percent, us. Jacob has his hands. Thinks they love this bit. <laughs> He's been very patient. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I was about to say, you know who, who, you know who the real winner is going to be uh, in a couple of days. It's going to be Benji or Morgan. One of them's going to be the winner of hypnotic. What Big do? What so as much as I love bag? stuff being stuffed down my throat, um, I do have one more question, at least to close off, I guess, the round table, so to speak. Because, um, of course, this has been an uh, amazing opportunity, a great outlet for everyone to express their pros, the cons, the qualms with um, each of the individual's games, um, each of our finalists. Um, but there have been conversations going on in the jury chat leading up to this point as well. And there may be some things that... Maybe in the moment when you were in the game, you may not have acknowledged, but in hindsight, looking back in retrospect, you may have acknowledged or noticed. So my final question before we, I guess we close off this round table is, has anything been confirmed to you? Like, like was there any, what were your, were your perceptions of Benji and Morgan 
accurate to how you felt in the game now that you're in on the jury? Like, is there any misconceptions you may have had of either of the two finalists that have since been cleared up or have been shot down? And are there any things uh, that you felt confident in with Benji or Morgan that has been like, I oh, like yeah, there's a, one. One <laughs> there's a big one for now. me. I'm Let's higher working now than I was at the start of the game. It was my big change. What'd you say? I'm higher on working now than I was at the start of the game. It's my big change. I will say, Zach, this whole game just proved to me that Morgan was playing from minute one. Morgan was the first HOH. Had a decision. Was going to put Cody up. Took that back. Gained trust even after that whole debacle and still made it to the end despite everything that went on. Morgan was a epicenter of a lot of shit that happened in this game good and bad and benji yeah. benji was too by association but at the end of the day morgan did all the dirty work and used benji to keep herself safe yeah Benji's yeah i definitely literally, think morgan has more than from... hands than benji 100 percent, because she was ben... talking and whispering in people's ears and oh. um i just feel like she she got into a lot of people's heads and she um she basically you know did what she needed to do to get herself to where she's at go ahead mike i didn't want to cut you off i'm sorry i just didn't want to forget my train of thought because with my old age it'll go it'll go out of one ear and come out of the other which by the way i'll be turning 43 on sunday my birthday is on sunday not to plug but to plug um but yes Happy mike you, birthday. Can, you can go no Yankees hats on Sunday. Anyway, um, I feel like there's a <laughs> very you. crucial moment that doesn't happen without Morgan's pull. And it's the fact that, for at least from my eyes, Benji was gone over Wesley. And now Benji is in final two. I would say that's I, me, Joanne. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. I have to say, I think I was a big part of that. Like, not to toot my own horn, but I think... We're- because she was i talked to harley and harley I, was the critical vote last second <laughs> i i feel like me talking to harley for, for uh correct me if i'm wrong harley but i think with benji talking to harley and me talking to harley that night i think we got harley to uh, and i will be it honest was. even even before then me and harley were talking we were like we can't let benji go and then you talk, and then I think you talked to Harley. Because okay, okay, I'm gonna be honest with the whole Harley thing. Um, I had a final two with Harley. I had a final two with Joanne. I had a final two with Benji. I had a final two with uh even Wesley at some point. Yeah, <laughs> we had one, but I don't think either of us believed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Up. So well, yeah. I actually had a final two with me as well. So yeah. of course, I you did. Did. <laughs> sounds, sounds about like, right. I was in Wait, my project. Like I've been in my life for Juan. I love Juan. Like. Juan is my number one. I, I think week two, me and Cody had a conversation where it was just like, it's really weird that everyone absolutely trusts Juan. He's definitely throwing cops and like trying not to make waves and then accidentally won an HOH. I never I mean, threw cops. I just suck at it. I was thinking of throwing before I fucking won it. But yeah. Did Morgan someone Benji... say accidentally winning an HOH? I mean, it was just auto like, I think that's what they're going for. It was an auto H O H. Just yeah. whoever, whichever two people were kind of the most respected were auto H O H. But yeah, Morgan and Benji did what they had to do. I think they both played well together. I don't think if if neither of them played the way they did together, neither of them would be there. And I think that's interesting because if mm-hmm. let's say if me Harley and Joanne decided to just let Benji go at that point, I don't think this like this finale would this jury would not look like this first of all i don't no, think the whole not. joanne liz chris thing would have happened and it would have been a completely different game so they really the, played this game together really well i guess the question is who is more critical for both of them making it to the end then? now that's interesting i don't know i i think both of them because like benji won the mm-hmm. comps to keep both of them safe and morgan used the information around and get in people's heads to keep both of them safe too so like it I don't I don't know what I have to hear from right now. I know I'm leaning Morgan because I just don't I just there's no way I can't give Morgan my vote after all the shit. Like Morgan played the game messy, yes, but I think Morgan needed to do that. Like Morgan didn't need the comps. Morgan just needed to tell you, oh, by the way, Juan did this yesterday. Um, you're gonna be arena. Like the whole Liz situation where Morgan was like, 
Morgan and Benji, I don't know who told Liz that that Liz was going to be a renom, which was never going to happen. I don't I don't know if anyone can confirm that. Maybe Joanne, but um, you told me that. What, what? week was this? When I won, um, when I won H O H, and yeah, it, she tried oh, to say that, yeah, and I was like, no, that's he didn't say that. Week. I know. Yeah. I I went to Liz. I told Liz. I was like, no, he didn't. He didn't say that. That was never the those. That was never a conversation. That Liz did Morgan not even and, come up. Morgan and Benji I tried to get Juan to put Liz up, and he said no. <laughs> no, Morgan and Benji tried to get me to do that too. Like they were fighting so hard for me to mm -hmm. say, oh, maybe I could put Liz up, but I was like, nope, no. Yeah, he but said they no. They used that. They used it at the perfect time, knowing that Joanne did this thing to Chris, and I voted Chris out. Oh, maybe one really was coming after me, Liz. And I don't know. They just they just played use the information of the game in general perfectly. Both of them. Well, mostly Morgan, but I I don't know. <laughs> they played a great game in my in my eyes. I I respect the game. I respect the messiness. To answer Jacob's question, I think. The biggest thing for me was the whole game. I wasn't sure. I really did not think Morgan. I man, I guess I'm just naive. I didn't think Morgan and Benji were like working that much with other people, especially Morgan. So when like Juan was like, I think they were like Morgan's working with Cody. You know, it's just like I don't know. Like I, so that whole thing. Like to hear that Chris, like you and Cody and Morgan, like all had a thing and like. Oh yeah, the entire final 11, there was this like grand plan between me, Cody, and Liz to try to make an alliance with Morgan and drag them away from Benji because it just felt like the evidence was pointing, with what Morgan was saying, the evidence was pointing to them not working together and like that was answer, I answering your thing. Once I, I got into the jury and I kind of took a step back and looking at the absolute facts, I'm like, damn, I was an idiot for assuming the two of them were not still working together. Like once you're looking at just the pure evidence and not the the mist that's flying over your face, like and the fact that like we never talked about that at all because we were both working with Morgan, so we didn't want to like bring that person up to each other because uh oh that would show that I'm not loyal to you because I'm also talking to Morgan like. Morgan was everyone's secret. Morgan was everyone's secret. Not mine. I was throwing, all I'm I was saying is that <laughs> my, my secret. all I'm saying not. is that nope. uh, my eviction speech was accurate with the Red Dead Redemption analogy, and that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, tried. I, wanted to, I wanted to say how many people here knew that like um, Benji hosts a game and Morgan like does like the after show for the game. I, I, I knew I knew part of it, but I also knew Didn't because of their icons, their profile pics, both at the distortion. Yeah, thing. but oh, okay. yeah, because if I'm not mistaken, Joanne's HOH. I think if if I remember, I wanted Joanne to put Morgan up. If if I'm not mistaken, I don't I don't really remember. I don't know, but okay, I, I so just we know Cody's... I wanted Morgan on the block. And okay, when I did it, just responded to the responded to the Skype chat, so we know he's still alive. Perfect, but <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say, oh, where is where where is where is where is my guy? <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how I him. feel. Yeah, I don't remember either. I was like, when I left, I was like, I'm done. I'm tired. Hey, oh. Alex. Hi, Hi, Alex. Um, I'm just gonna interrupt for a quick second, just so, just so I can tell you all while you're on here. Um, we had Benji and Morgan vote on their final poll of the season, and. Um, the time that works best for them for finale night is tomorrow night at 10 p.m. So that is when we will crown a winner. Um, we will probably go in uh, juror order. So starting with Eric, ending with Harley. Um, we can move people around uh, in the order. If someone's like, I can't make it till 11, we can have you scheduled. Uh, for later, um, for those that those that don't know how jury or how finale night works, um, we will most likely um, well, first of all, we will be streaming it, so everyone people can watch. Send the links to everyone. Yay! Um, how this will probably work is we will, um, and this is subject to change. Um, well put all of you first in a breakout room in Zoom, and then we will have Morgan and Benji in the main room. 
Um, and you guys will be able to watch on Facebook and stream like that. Um, whenever it is a player's time, we will send one of you in there. You can uh, ask questions you want. I forget what the time limit is, um, but everyone will go. And then final speeches, cast votes, reveal the winner, and then we have some fun reunion and award stuff afterwards. Yay. Thank you. Can we play Jackbox? <laughs> yes. Afterwards, that's up to you guys, I guess. I, I do um, feel like that's actually a really good way to also like kind of start wrapping up if we also could. Yes. Um, I didn't know where we were, so. Yeah. If Liz doesn't get every single award, I'm rioting. Cool. All right. So, last thing. No. Stop playing. Stop playing, sir. Stop playing. playing. Love y'all. <laughs> I want sleep. Um, just a couple of just quick things. Um, thank you guys so much for playing this game. This has been a bombastic, very entertaining, chaotic season to host. This has been very unusual, very unlike other games that I've hosted, uh, both within this series and other series that I've delved in. So before we officially wrap this up and Heather ends the recording, I'm just going to ask you to guys raise your hand for, I'm going to say something and see if, and raise your hand if it pertains to you. Just a jury vote going into tomorrow, finale night. Raise your hand if you're undecided. Raise your hand if you think 50-50, either one of them can get my vote. It just depends on how they answer the questions that I could be swayed. All right. Couple of hands, all right. Put them down. Raise your hand if you're leaning towards voting Morgan, but you're willing to vote for Benji. If Benji impresses you during the okay. A couple people, all right. Raise their hands. <laughs> Didn't mean to use that twice, but raise your hand that. if you're leaning towards Benji, but are willing to vote Morgan given other evidence. Okay. Raise your hand if you're for sure voting one or the other. You just there's nothing that the other finalists could do. Liz voted for both. Hey, I'm 50. Yeah, we've had people raise hands I for multiple. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got confused. They both can't be. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fameless. Well, at least a couple of you have, are, are honest. That, By the way, um, thank you guys so much for attending the jury roundtable. I think this is the most um, jurors that we've had in attendance for this. It's almost a full house. We almost were able to get the entire jury for this. So again, thank you guys so much for giving your input. and Cody. giving. Your David Cody giving your perspectives on both of the final twos of the game. Um, it started off um, during the final three HOH, and we we're going to do a final three thing. I was waiting for that. We couldn't. Damn. Um, but again, thank you guys so much. Why the hell not? We were doing it during <laughs> the final three it. HOH. Because we, were, we were about to start talking Wait. about you, and then you got to fix it. Yes, because I could have won. So And, and also... And also, full transparency, we said in the jury chat we wanted to do the thing that they do on the show where, like, they sit down with Dr. Will and he's like, so who do you think is going to be the next juror? And then, like, they say their predictions. And then the fourth placer walks out and they're like, oh, my God. We wanted yeah. to do they, that. They did Final Four all in but one y'all night. y'all yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, I'm not going to comment. Me, maybe. I just want to comment. Jacob had a little tiny smirk go up when you said Dr. Will because he realized he was the host. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Uh huh. Doctor. Before, before we end about the vote thing, one one reason that can convince me to vote for Benji is that Benji just says how this was Benji's plan to use Morgan as a way to strategically do everything, and Benji kept them safe by winning the comps. But we'll see how that goes tomorrow. For for me personally, we will see how that goes. Indeed. Um, why so Benji Cody Morgan. said in the chat that. We'll say, though, give me a good reason to vote for Benji because I feel more of a reason to vote for Morgan since they were actively mm -hmm. playing all sides and never truly got caught for it. Damn. Maybe and Cody is wants to do it very much at that part. Nope. Mike's confused. I'm trying to help up here. To free vote now. Yeah, it sounds like we all kind of collectively have questions about Benji's social strategy because that was the big thing about their game. And we all have questions about Morgan's comp strategy because that was like the other thing with like we both have questions about their flaws quote unquote because was that part of their strategy or was that just their flaw facts their flaws were the others strong points yeah. yep what would that be speaking of points the recording is over <laughs> have a phenomenal night